Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer, and today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install True Ride's line of self-adjusting electric trailer brake assemblies. The brake pad is made up of a composite material that is chemically bonded to the brake shoe itself, and that's important because back in the day, a lot of electric trailer brakes were riveted into place, and what can happen is as your brake pad starts to wear down, that rivet's going to start to show, and then it's going to start making deep gouges inside of the drum. And you don't want that because then you're going to have to replace your drum on top of replacing your electric trailer brakes. The nice thing about this being self-adjusting is that you're not going to have to constantly get under there like you would with manually adjusted brake pads. So what that means is that over time as this wears down, it's not going to require a whole bunch of labor. It's only going to be that initial labor where you kind of get it set to the correct setting on here so that it's actually dragging correctly and then stopping correctly. Whereas with manual ones, every so often you're going to have to get under your trailer and adjust it yourself every single time. Electric trailer brake assemblies are going to come in a variety of different sizes and weight capacities. And this is all going to be really based on the capacity of your axle. So you want to make sure that when you are adding brakes on or replacing them, that you're getting the correct size for your axle. So get under your trailer, look for that axle tag, figure out what the capacity is, and then you can look through our fit guide and find the correct brake assembly to fit that axle. The last part of this is going to be our hub and drum assembly. Um, that's also going to depend on the size of our braking assembly and also the bolt pattern of our wheel because we have to get our wheel back up onto that hub. If you have any questions or need any help trying to find the correct brake uh, assembly kit or even your hub and drum kit, then please reach out to us via our customer service line or our Ask the Expert link and then I or one of my coworkers will help find the correct stuff for your trailer. To start off our installation we're going to first have to take off our wheels or we can lift up and support our trailer so that our axles can hang. Um, I've already gone ahead and lifted up the trailer. I have it on jacks. It's all good to go. I just need to take these wheels off so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, if you don't have an impact gun then I definitely recommend doing it on the ground. That way you're not trying to hold the wheel in place and break it off with a wrench. To start off our installation, we're going to first need to lift up our trailer and we'll take off of our wheel and then we're going to remove our idler hub so that we can add on our brakes. Now to do that, we're going to need to take a rubber mallet and we'll pop off our dust cap and you just kind of smack towards yourself just a little bit. You can kind of see it start to lift up off of here and just kind of keep working it loose and turning it. You definitely don't need to hit it too hard. You don't want to end up denting it all up if we have to reuse it. And from there we can go ahead and take a shop towel. Now this is going to be a pretty messy process. You're definitely going to have a bunch of shop towels laying around and some penetrating or some brake clean. I'll kind of clean that up just a bit, make it easier to get off here because our next step is going to be removing our cotter pin. And take some needle nose pliers and kind of bend that back straight. We have it straight enough, we can start pulling it out. And I'm also going to wipe that down because we will be reusing that. It's not going to give you it in the kit. Next, we can go ahead and take some channel locks, break our castle nut free, and unscrew it. And then wipe it off some more. I've already gone ahead and pretty much wiped it out. And spray that with some brake cleaner and we're going to go ahead we got one more washer on there that we're going to need we'll just pull our idler hub forward and that's going to pop out our outer bearing and our washer outer bearing we can set aside because our brake is going or our hub that we're going to have to install is going to actually have that included but otherwise you would need to clean it out and as you can see with that grease on there it's pretty gross we'd want to repack that but we'll go ahead set that aside we can pull off our idler hub and we'll just clean the spindle off get all that old grease out of the way 
So the next thing we need to do is know the measurement of our brake flange. So we got a four bolt flange here, and honestly it's really easy. If you just use our fit guide for trailer brakes and you find out the capacity of your axle, you can easily look up what brake is going to fit on there and then kind of switch down to that bolt pattern. So we've got our true ride here and it's got a four bolt pattern. It's also got the studs already in place for you, but it does not come with any nuts. So you will have to source those yourself. Now, when you're installing these, you want to always make sure that you have them facing the correct way. There is a right hand side and a left hand side. On these, there's going to be a little left or LH or RH down the bottom. You can see right there, right next to the adjuster. One other way to check this is also to just look at the brake shoes itself. So you'll see a smaller one and a larger one. And then we want that larger one facing towards the rear of the trailer. So now that we know that we have the correct size, we're going to go ahead and pop on our brake. And we'll put on our lock nuts here. So the cool thing about these brake assemblies is that they are self-adjusting so that you won't have to constantly get down there, pop out that little back cover and adjust the adjuster right here at the bottom. So what it does is as it starts to send slack, uh, when, you adjust, when you press on the brakes, it's going to start to push your brake shoes out to slow down your trailer and if there's any slack, it's going to catch on the adjuster and keep it at that length so that that next time when you press on the brakes, it's not going to have to go as far. So it's going to keep pushing itself out until you fully wear down the brake shoes. If you ever have to take these out, you can usually just grip them with a uh, flathead screwdriver, pop them out of place, and then you can stick either that flathead screwdriver in there or you can get a brake shoe. We also carry those here at eTrailer. They make it a whole lot easier trying to adjust that instead of using that flathead screwdriver. but. Since we're all good, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that back into place, and that's just gonna kinda help keep some water out of here. Now that we have our brakes in place, we're gonna go ahead and run our wiring for it. And to do that, I'm gonna use some 10 gauge blue coated wire. I'm gonna run that up from my junction box, so that way when our brake controller activates our brakes, it's gonna run down to that, and then back to our brake assemblies. And then on top of that, I'm also gonna need another separate wire for our ground. Now you can run that all the way back up to the junction box and ground it there or you can just ground it straight to the frame, which is gonna save you a whole lot of hassle of running the wire all the way up, and also just that added expense of that longer length. So we'll run our blue wire from our junction box. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna follow the trailer light wiring that I already have, just cause there's already holes drilled through the frame. So I'm gonna come down here, and then we'll shoot across to the other side of our axle for the other side of our braking assembly. All right, now we have our brake controller wire, we're gonna hook it up to one of the wires on our brake assembly. Now it doesn't matter which one, either will do. And I'm gonna put these both on one side and then run the other over to our other side. So we'll twist this up a bit and get our butt connector on there. For our other one, we can just ground that. So, I'm actually gonna kind of double that up just a bit. Go ahead and put on our butt connector. You're gonna wanna make sure that you use heat shrink. You don't want any chance of these wires getting corroded from any water. And we don't really need that big of a length. I'm just gonna run it right up into the frame. And actually, I think I'm gonna run it over to here just because this part of the frame's a lot thicker, so it's gonna be harder to drill through. Go ahead and put on our ring terminal. Put that down. I'm going to go ahead and also tighten this up to our wire over here. I don't want to take any chance at our wiring kind of getting over our leaf spring here and then having this pop up and smash our ground because that's going to make our brakes not want to work. So we'll secure it to our line and self taper it into the frame. All 
Now we'll go ahead and run our jumper over to the other brake. Crimp that on. And then we can use our heat gun to shrink down those bug connectors. Now that we have this side done, I'm going to go over to the other side of our axle and get that done as well. So when you first put these on, the manufacturer always recommends to just take your trailer out, get up to uh, like 40 miles per hour, and then stop on your brakes. So you want to do that 20 times. Instead of doing that, what you can do is put your wheel on, um, spin it a little bit, maybe put a marker kind of at one spot, and you want to get about one full rotation with it before it starts to kind of drag or before it fully comes to a stop. So it's going to drag the whole time it's kind of coming around. You'll hear it kind of scraping against the brake pads itself. And then you will basically want to get about one full rotation. And if you're not getting that, maybe you're getting too, too much, you're going past that line, then go ahead and tighten it up a little bit. If not, maybe you're getting a little bit less. And then what you can do is just kind of loosen a little bit. Now that I've got both sides complete, all I have left to do is throw on my hub and drum, put our wheels back on, drop our trailer down, and we're all good to go. Well, I think about does it for today's look at and installation of the True Ride line of self-adjusting trailer brake assemblies. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.